do you like the medications you're taking now? I don't feel them. They don't seem to affect you at this at point. At night, they do. Makes me sleepy, makes me drowsy. But in daytime, I got so much energy, I don't feel it. But what it does is this. It gradually slows my moving around down. It gradually slows my whole body down so I can go to sleep and I sleep just like that. Medication is beginning to mute this patient's third episode of mania. Uh, Professor Wonder uh, was concerned that there, uh, if I understand him correctly, that there's too much uh, depression, whatever this difficulty or whatever you like to call it, in, in my family, given the, uh, given the one line in the family. So he sent out questionnaires for us to, to make a more thorough examination of the family tree. The first man on the page is my father. This is his mother. She was born in 1876. She definitely had the malady that I have. She's the one who died under very unfortunate circumstances at the uh, state hospital uh, in Provo. It's a toughie sometimes to discriminate between depression, which is psychologically caused, and that which is biologically caused. One would have thought Doug had a psych quote, psychological depression until we were able to give him this new medication. He failed to get better at anything. Uh, must be psychogenic. But in fact, when we had the right chemical, lo and behold, most of his pain of 30 odd years, lysed, disappeared, went down the drain. That's very edifying. I mean, it's not only terrific for Doug, it's very edifying for the psychiatrist to see things that look like personality go away when you give chemicals. Here's a bottle of little pills. Just ordinary pills like you'd find at any pharmacist's counter. Two of those a day makes all the difference in my life as to whether I live in misery or whether I function. The medication that has restored Doug Barton's life begins its work here. Each of our billions of brain cells, called neurons, is separated from its neighbors by a microscopic gap, the synapse. Communication between neurons depends on chemical messengers called neurotransmitters, which jump the synapse between neurons. They cause the receiving cells to fire or not to fire. Some neurotransmitters, such as serotonin and norepinephrine, may be deficient in biological depressives. Antidepressant drugs seem to increase serotonin and norepinephrine in the synapses of depressed patients. Conversely, manic patients seem to have an excess of certain transmitters. For them, in ways not yet understood, lithium, a naturally occurring salt, dampens or eliminates mania in 80% of all cases. Unfortunately, though, for a significant minority of patients, the antidepressant medications have not You're worked. One family. You, no one family can fight this illness. You know, but my therapy is with my support group. That's my therapy, and I think the medical treatment I'm getting is good, but it would be nothing without the therapy I'm getting. When I'm down, I mean really down, I will call you no matter where my pride is at. I will call you and I'll say, I don't know what I'm doing or anything else. Maybe she hasn't gotten... I don't believe that there's really any substitute for community support, for people around someone showing that, that they care about them. And when someone's depressed, they really need to show that, even, even if it doesn't improve their mood. Just to see that makes such a difference. Well, all interactions in daily life have a neurochemical equivalent, obviously. Uh, talking to each other, hugging each other, anything that one does uh, has a neurochemical equivalent. So the division of psychology and biology doesn't really make a lot of sense. The important element is to what degree is the biology perturbed by these interactions and how does one intervene when one tries to do something therapeutically. Most of our self-esteem or a major component is how we do in our roles in life as housewife, mother, wage earner, student. And, uh, this must have had devastating effects on your self-esteem, and I guess I'm asking, are you bearing residual scars? I've got a lot of fence mending to do. Over the last quarter of a century, I've unintentionally disrupted and destroyed a lot of relationships. 
I don't know if I'll need help from you uh, or, or, or not. You'll have to And I don't know that. either, and if I can beat that broken leg metaphor into the ground, many people, when the cast is removed, they have a limp and their muscle is atrophied, will learn to walk themselves pretty rapidly, and some people need physical therapy. And the analogy in depression is often when the depression is uh, relieved or eliminated, in, in particularly good instances, people still are somewhat demoralized and don't have the oomph. For, for depression, many successful treatment programs incorporate both biological and psychological interventions. Talk therapy seems to work best when integrated with appropriate antidepressant medication. This is illustrated in this dramatization of patient and therapist. Up and down all night and uh, and I just can't sleep. I mean, I, I go to bed and I feel tired and but my mind just won't turn off. It, 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 it keeps running, running, running and I'm up and down all night and in the morning I just uh, lay there waiting for the alarm to go off. How about during the day? Oh, how's your energy level during the day? Zero. Big, fat, zero. Have you felt so bad off that you would think you'd be better off if you were dead? Yes. This medication should help. Uh, it should definitely help you sleep better. I want you to take one, just one capsule tonight. Uh, in fact, call me tomorrow because I'll be really interested in knowing how well you've slept with it. And then we may have to modify it as we go from there. Here you go. I can't tell you what a joy it is to sleep all night through. But you say these aren't sleeping pills. No. No, this is an antidepressant medication, which is sedative. It's interesting. The medications we have, some are very sedative, some are very activating. In your case, because your depression was one in which you were going without sleep, we needed a sedative drug. If, however, you couldn't get out of bed and you're sleeping all the time, I would have given you an activating one. It's changing all the time. This particular medication wasn't even on the market a year ago. Have you started seeing Dr. Westcott, the psychologist I referred you to a couple weeks ago? Yes, a couple weeks ago. Yes, I like her. I think she... I really think she understands me. Are you noticing any side effects from the medication? Well, you, you told me about the appetite thing, and it is noticeable. But I would rather struggle with what I eat than go back to where I was. We'll keep an eye on that. If it gets to be a problem, sometimes it does, we might have to try something else. We'll just keep talking about that. I'm sorry I had to change her appointment last week. I hope it wasn't a problem. It's just that my daughter wanted me to come and help out at her school program at the last minute. Not a problem. You gave me 24 hours notice and I appreciate that. And sometimes it's a sign of good health when daughter's programs take precedence over psychiatry appointments. <laughs> How was your sleep? I don't even think about it anymore. You know, it's funny. You, you don't think about sleep unless it's a problem. Okay. And your energy level? All you could ever want. My husband is delighted to have his wife back. Are you still seeing Dr. Westcott? Mm-hmm. But we're beginning to space our appointments now. I am so grateful to her. I couldn't have faced what happened to me. And it's still going to take time. But you know, I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. I treat well over a hundred different cases of depression every year, many of them quite severe. Sometimes the depressions are endogenous. They come for no reason. They have very little psychological basis. But many, maybe most, are a combination. Life crises, life problems, early life events coupled with abnormal brain biology. Typically, when I initiate treatment, it is necessary to give the person a biologically normal brain in order that the psychotherapy can then work.
In the present state of affairs, psychiatrists are becoming more neurobiologists, certainly more ever than they used to be in the past when they were typically thought of as analysts. The process of psychotherapy is more and more being delivered into the hands of psychologists and specially trained social workers. Treatment often involves a team. This may be the psychiatrist or a physician, a psychotherapist, psychologist, and not uncommonly patients also involve themselves in treatment with various support groups, self-help programs, and the like. In psychiatry, part of our process is the continued fine-tuning of the medication depending upon side effects or any problems that might arise for the patient. The biology and the psychology of an individual are interrelated. One does not exist independent of the other. The biology has clear-cut psychological manifestations. Psychological adaptations will often change the biology. These are interrelated. This is why we can't treat purely psychological problems with medications any more than we could intend to treat a biological problem with solely psychotherapy. As a professional, whether I'm treating people by dispensing medications or discussing with them their life's deepest conflicts, this process is a very gratifying and meaningful process. And the future will see more medications with more applications, but there never will be a replacement ultimately for the soul-to-soul -soul interaction of a good talking psychotherapy.